What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm taking a look at my top 10 favorite sneakers in my collection. Before we jump into the video, I just want to give a huge shout out to my second channel which I just started up. It's an unboxing channel where I open pretty much anything. So if you're interested in checking out some maybe electronics unboxings or I just did some Pokemon card unboxings, I don't know why I'm not into Pokemon cards at all. But if you guys want to check that out, make sure to click the link in the top of the description and subscribe if you haven't yet. But without further ado, let's jump right into the video with number 10. The Kind of Guys Adidas Ultra Boost. So as a lot of you guys know, the Ultra Boost is one of my favorite sneakers ever created. I just love the shoe, I love how comfortable it is, and I love how good it looks. Now this might not be my favorite Ultra Boost of all time, but it's definitely my favorite one in my collection at the moment, and that's why I put this shoe in the list. I have had some other Ultra Boosts that I've preferred, in particular the 3M 1.0s, which I actually actually just donated and kind of regretted. The A Kind of Guys Ultra Boost is one of my favorites because of the lacing system. I love how crazy and different this is, and I guess the overall aesthetic of the shoe is pretty different. You have this crazy 3D prime knit zigzag texture, which is something that I haven't really seen on any other prime knit sneakers, and I think it's a really unique look, and that's why I like this shoe so much. You also have this tie-dye yellow and pink outsole, which again, is pretty different, and I really dig it. And this sort of pale tan colorway is not something you usually see with Ultra Boost, and that's why I think I'm so drawn to this Ultra Boost, because it's such a different take on the Ultra Boost design language and it's just a dope looking sneaker. Of course, you can't forget the fact that the Ultra Boost is one of the most comfortable sneakers available, and in my opinion, I still think it is the most comfortable sneaker available, but that's due in part to the super comfortable prime knit upper, which is really stretchy and really breathable, it kinda feels like you're wearing a sock, and of course the Boost midsole, which feels incredible underfoot. However, I probably wouldn't run in this shoe because I feel like that Boost gets a little bit mushy over time and it just doesn't give you the support that you need. But for everyday lifestyle wear, this is it. I also love the materials on this shoe. It has sort of a suede heel counter, which is not something you usually see on Ultra Boost, and that gives it that little bit of extra premium appeal, which I really dig. The A Kind of Guys Ultra Boost dropped right at the end of the Ultra Boost hype, so it didn't really get as hyped up as I think it could have been. It's probably one of the best Ultra Boosts to drop, in my opinion, and I'm kind of glad it dropped when it did because I was able to pick it up for under retail. Number nine, the OG Off-White Nike Presto. Yes, this shoe is incredibly hyped, but that doesn't mean it's not one of the most worn sneakers in my collection. I've kind beat this sneaker down. It's, it's kind of ridiculous and sad to see. This is actually the second off-white pickup in my collection and I grabbed it about a month after it first released. The upper of the off-white Presto is incredibly comfortable. Even though it doesn't have any sort of crazy soft foam in the midsole, it still feels great underfoot. It just kind of molds to your foot over time and it's one of those shoes that just feels better the more that you wear it. Of course, I think the shoe looks good. You've got this really cool sort of prototype off-white look, which I think really adds to the appeal of this sneaker. I also love the color scheme. I think out of all the off-white Prestos that have dropped, this one's probably the best because you get some nice contrast between the black knit upper and also this sort of sail colored midfoot cage. And of course you can't forget the off-white hits. You've got the Nike tag on the side of the tongue, you've got the air branding on the heel, you've got that little orange tag resting underneath the stitched on Nike swoosh, and also the Nike paragraph printed on the medial side of the shoe. But I think one of my favorite details on this entire sneaker is actually this tongue because this tongue is stitched on top of the standard Presto tongue. It's not something that I realized until I got the shoe in hand, but I really dig the look of the oversized tongue because I think it really makes the sneaker stand out. And just like all the other off-white sneakers, you've got an exposed foam edge. I've sort of experimented with switching out the laces. For a while I had the orange laces in one and the green laces in the other, and then I think I wore this to some event or something where I just felt like the color was too much, so I put back in the white laces, and now I think I'm going to switch them back because I think I've had enough of these white laces. There's just something about that mismatched look which I really dig, and it almost makes the shoe look ridiculous, which I think I'm drawn to even more. Overall, I think the off-white Nike Presto is probably one of the best off-white Nike sneakers to ever release. And and it's definitely one of my most worn pairs in my collection. Number eight, the Adidas Yeezy Boost 700 Wave Runner. The dad shoe trend is finally starting to die down and the 700 Wave Runner is probably one of my favorite sneakers that came out of that trend. This crazy bulky sneaker is also incredibly comfortable and I think that's one of my favorite parts about the shoe. But I also love the crazy out there aesthetic. I think the crazy mashup of colors is different and it's exciting and it's something you don't usually see on sneakers. And to be honest, it's the first and last Yeezy 700 that actually looked like its own unique shoe. All the rest of them are just kind of tan, brown, or black. This is just another example of a shoe that I've worn the crap out of, and that's because it's so crazy and out there, it just works with everything. And it's definitely not because it matches with everything, it's because it stands out so much you can't help but look at it. Because of the crazy bulk of this shoe, they're able to incorporate a lot of padding into the upper, which makes it very comfortable on foot, and of course you've got that full length boost midsole, which only adds to the comfort. Some people hate it, some people love it, I personally love it, I can't get enough of it, I think it's probably one of the most worn sneakers in my collection, actually behind the off-white Presto, but I think because this shoe 
is so much less expensive than the off-white Presto, I'm less afraid to get it dirty, and that's why I think it's a little bit higher on the list. Number seven, the Adidas Futurecraft 4D. This shoe might not be the most comfortable shoe in the world, it might not be the most eye-catching shoe in the world, but it's probably one of the most interesting shoes in the world. As I'm sure you know by now, this shoe is part of Adidas's initiative to start 3D printing midsoles, and this is one of the first pairs that was actually commercially available. The midsole is slightly spongy and somewhat flexible, and the whole appeal of this shoe is that you can actually print a midsole to fit your exact foot shape. Now obviously they didn't do that with this shoe because this shoe is a limited run and they just didn't have the capabilities to do that, but the hope is in the future you can walk into an Adidas store and have them print a midsole for you right on the spot, which is crazy to think about. I also love the aesthetic of this midsole. It looks futuristic, it looks different, it looks crazy. It's just a super unique looking shoe. Unfortunately, the midsole doesn't flex that much, so it's not incredibly comfortable underfoot. However, that is somewhat made up for by the super comfortable and light prime knit upper. The prime knit on the Futurecraft 4D is definitely thinner than most prime knits that you find on things like Ultra Boost. However, because of that, it's a lot more breathable and it's a lot more stretchy. And surprisingly, at least to me, it's still just as durable. I've worn this shoe a bunch and it hasn't ripped or torn or anything like that. I think my favorite part about this shoe isn't actually the sneaker itself, it's the innovation behind it and what it means for for the future. Number six, the Nike KD6 Aunt Pearl. So in the same way, I don't think the Futurecraft 4D is at the top of my list because of the sneaker itself. This shoe is similar in that I like the sneaker itself, but I like it more for the meaning behind it. If you don't know the story of Katie's Aunt Pearl, she died of cancer. So every year when he drops a new silhouette, he releases an Aunt Pearl themed sneaker. I lost my mother to breast cancer back in 2016. So just having something that represents that and sort of brings some awareness, even though it's not much to that cause, it's pretty important to me. And I just really appreciate the fact that he does that. There's something really nice and calming about the floral upper of this sneaker, and even though my mom never saw this shoe or probably didn't even really care about it, it, it really means a lot to me and it makes me think of her, so I, I really appreciate it for that reason, and that's why this shoe is number six in my collection. And to be fair, it's also a pretty nice looking shoe as well. Number five. The Air Jordan 5 Tokyo. The Tokyo 5s are a grail sneaker that I just never thought that I was ever gonna have in my collection. It was ComplexCon 2018, and like I said, I entered a raffle to win a pair of shoes. I didn't know what pair it was or what options I would have available. I happened to win the raffle, and I was able to pick whatever shoe I wanted in my size at their booth. And this was by far my favorite sneaker in a size nine so I had to pick it up. The Tokyo 5s are an absolute grail, not only because they were super limited and you could only grab them in Tokyo when they released, but also because of the fact that this shoe just pops. It's a beautiful sneaker. The yellow upper is not something you usually see on Air Jordan 5s until recently. Some of my favorite details on the shoe are the 23 logo on the heel and the splatter print shark teeth. It's an older shoe, so there's some yellowing in the midfoot cage, and I have worn it a couple times. The outsole is not the cleanest, but it's by far one of my favorite sneakers in my collection, and I still can't believe that I actually own this shoe. Number four, the Supreme Nike Flyknit Lunar 1. I guess continuing in the vein of grails that I never thought that I would have, the Supreme Nike Flyknit Lunar 1 is one of those sneakers. The story about how I got this shoe is actually pretty crazy. I went to Manila in the Philippines and got a chance to actually meet Big Boy Chang, who has probably one of the most insane sneaker collections in the the entire world. He has pretty much every friends and family sneaker that ever released. His sneaker collection spans like multiple floors and as I was leaving his house he actually gifted me this pair, which is the most insane thing ever. Huge thank you to Big Boy Chang for the insane generosity on this pair. I can't even believe it. In my opinion, this is one of the best Supreme Nike collaborations that have ever dropped. And the reason I say that is because I love how low key it is and how comfortable it is. The only way you would be tipped off that this is a Supreme collaboration is from the subtext woven into the Flyknit upper. You've also got a tiny little Supreme box logo, but other than that, it's pretty minimal branding. This shoe has pretty much become my go-to for traveling. It's super comfortable, it's super lightweight, it's very breathable, and it's fresh as hell, it's crazy. Number three, the Bread Air Jordan 1. This shoe might be number three in my personal collection, and that's because there's a lot of other sneakers that have a lot of sentimental value, but design-wise, I think this is my favorite sneaker of all time. This is the most recent release of the Bread Ones. It's the 2016 remaster. It's got the slightly better leather. It's got the Nike Air tag at the top of the tongue. It's an all-around beautiful shoe. The Air Jordan 1 is my favorite silhouette of all time, but the Bread One is my favorite colorway of my favorite silhouette, making this my favorite shoe of all time. This colorway and the Air Jordan 1 just has so much history. Red is also one of my favorite colors, and in my opinion, this shoe just goes with everything. I have multiple pairs of these, so when this pair wears out, I'll just move on to the next one. Number two, the Planters Crunch Force Ones. So I'm sure if you're not familiar with me, this shoe seems like a totally out of left field choice, but the reason I love this shoe so much is because I'm actually the one who designed it. I worked with Planters Peanuts and the good people over at Garrison Studios to actually make this sneaker come to life, and I was inspired by classic basketball sneakers that use real materials, real 
leathers, real suede, and created something that felt quality both on the court and off. The colorway is nuts, you're not wrong about that, pun intended, but I think it came out really nicely. I love the quality of materials that Garrison used when they put this shoe together, and I'm just blown away by the fact that a sneaker that I designed is real, that people bought it, that it's sold out, and now people are actually wearing it. That's so, so crazy to me. But that's why this shoe is number two on my list. Number one, the Off-White Chicago Air Jordan 1s. I realize this shoe kind of seems like a cop-out because it's a super hyped up Air Jordan 1 and of course it's an Off-White collaboration. But the reason that I love this shoe so much is because I actually had a chance to meet Virgil Abloh, buy this shoe at that event and have him sign it for me. And he signed it Air Fowler, which is so dope. I actually have our conversation in a vlog, so if you'd like to check that out, click the link at the top of the screen. But as a diehard Air Jordan 1 fan, this collaboration was like a match made in heaven. I'm an industrial designer so design and prototyping is something that I deal with every day and the fact that he made the shoe look like a prototype of an Air Jordan 1 is just like the coolest concept to me. Some of my favorite details are the swept forward and tacked on Nike swoosh. I love the orange accent near the heel. I also love the fact that he exposed some of the materials that are underneath the leather so you get a good idea of how the sneaker actually goes together. Of course I love the Chicago colorway especially since Virgil Abloh and Michael Jordan are both from Chicago so it's a really cool callback to both of their upbringings and just the fact that I I got to meet him and have a conversation about this shoe and how it all came together. It just makes this sneaker that much more special for me and it's something that I'll never forget. And those are the top 10 sneakers in my collection. But that pretty much wraps up the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Now I would love to know the top 10 favorite sneakers in your collection. So let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.